Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's now 1 p.m. on Thursday, the 14th of May. For those of you that don't know, my name is Councillor Jackie Smith, and I'm Chairman of the Council. And I would now like to welcome uh, you to our first virtual meeting of South Stephen District Council. I'd like to begin by welcoming all councillors and officers and also those members of the press and the public who are joining our meeting today. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the meeting is being recorded and if you have not already done so, councillors are asked to turn their cameras on now. And could I also ask you please to turn off any telephones or put them onto silent mode and to remove any possible distractions. Before we begin the more formal part of the uh, meeting today, I would like to express my gratitude to the NHS uh, and the emergency, other emergency workers for everything they have done over a difficult few weeks. I must also pay tribute to other critical workers, mentioning particularly members of the South East Even District Council team. Thank you for those officers who have been working tirelessly to support the communities of South Kesteven, especially where demand has increased as a result of the virus and where staff have been redeployed to support the Council's response. I hope I speak on behalf of them, all of the members when I say that we are very grateful for all of their efforts. Tribute, tribute must also be paid to the role that members are playing as a part of the responses. I know a number of you have been signed up to support the befriending service, which is very valuable for our elderly and vulnerable residents. I also know that a lot of you are doing other work in your communities to support them at this difficult time. As chairman, I would now like to ask members to join me in a minute's silence to remember all of those who have lost their lives because of the coronavirus and their families at this difficult time. So we will now have a minute's silence. Thank you. I would also like us to now hold a minute's silence and reflection for all those who gave their lives as we commemorate VE Day, as many of those involved came from Lincolnshire. We will now have a minute's silence.
Thank you. Before we start the formal business of the meeting, I would like to like us to spend a few moments in silent reflection to remember two former councillors who have both recently passed away. Both former councillors, Frank Turner and Alan Parkin, were long-serving members of the council representing the Barrowby Gate area of Grantham. Frank was a member of South Castephen District Council between 2003 and 2019. Frank had the honour to be the elected Mayor of Grantham, not just once, but twice, in 2005 and 2013. A rare honour, denoting the respect and esteem in which he was held. And he fulfilled, he fulfilled his role with both dignity and integrity. During his term of office, he served as a member of the Licensing Committee between 2007 and 2019. And one of his many passions was cricket, both watching and playing. Alan became a district councillor for the same area in 1995, serving the ward for 20 years. He retired in 2015. He was also a member of the planning committee and chairman or vice chairman of that committee for a good part of his term of office. Alan was elected mayor of Grantham in 1999 was then elected chairman of South Castephen District Council in 2001. He was a lifelong rail enthusiast and enjoyed travelling to visit his family in London and in Detroit, Michigan. Alan attended the chairman's annual Christmas lunch in December last year after having just left hospital in the morning. Such was his dedication. Both gentlemen will be missed by their families, friends and former colleagues. Sadly, both Alan and Frank died as COVID-19 was coming to its peak. So it was not possible to have funeral services other than for very close family. And even those numbers were very limited. Both families have promised to advise me of memorial service details, which will be forwarded to you. As chairman, Please join me in a minute silence to remember our former councillors. Thank you. To help the smooth running of the meeting, we will be following the COVID-19 Council procedure, a copy of which was sent to all members with, with their agenda for the meeting. I'd be grateful today for members' cooperation and patience as we work through the agenda for the meeting. As this is the first virtual meeting of full Council, the Chief Executive has made an officer delegated decision to adopt the local authorities and police and crime panels, coronavirus, flexibility of local authority and police and crime panel meetings, England and Wales, regulations 2020, and to agree the previously mentioned procedures, including the suspension of the public open forum, members open questions, and notices of motion from this agenda. In the first instance, the view has been taken that public confidence is better served by having well-run accessible meetings at which they, 
at which key information can be shared and urgent decisions taken. It was also a priority to include all members of the Council. Once members are more comfortable with the arrangements for virtual meetings, we will look at re-adding those suspended items to the agenda. If you wish to speak, members should use the chat function and type a comment such as me, speak or next. Members of the public are asked not to use the chat forum. If any member of the public does post a comment in the chat box, they will be given a warning. If they post for a second time, they will be removed from the meeting. When invited to speak, you should turn on your microphone, which will have been released for you. Please do your best to remember to mute your microphone once you have finished speaking. Should you forget, we will be able to mute it for you. The length of time for speeches remains at five minutes. You will be warned when you have 30 seconds left and when your time is up. Can I also ask that members indicate through the chat function if they are intending to leave the meeting. Thank you. <coughs> to open the meeting, I invite the Leader of the Council to give us a factual briefing on everything the Council has been doing as part of its uh, coronavirus response. I understand that the Leader's speech is likely to be longer than the five-minute limit. While this is something that we would normally propose second and take a vote on, I ask for your indulgence in these exceptional circumstances. In the interest of the efficient running of the meeting and the spirit of the 2020 regulations, I, as Chairman, am going to suspend the five-minute limit for this item only and allow the Leader to give his update without being encumbered by time restrictions. Callum Cook, please provide your update. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. If I can also welcome my colleagues and officers from across South Stephen and members of the public who are joining us for our first ever virtual full council meeting. I think it is safe to say that when I last addressed full council, life looked very different. We were debating and agreeing our budget for this financial year, progressing our work to grow our local economy and looking forward to a variety of events to celebrate our wonderful heritage. That was March the 2nd before the impact of COVID-19 arrived at our doors and changed so swiftly and so decisively how we live and how we work. As a council, we set out three clear priorities that continue to guide us through this crisis. To protect the health of our staff, members and residents, to maintain our critical services and to support our local businesses. Every decision we make supports these priorities and is centred on protecting lives and livelihoods. Putting people first is what we are committed to do as a council. And this is being echoed in our neighbourhoods and on our streets as we clap for carers, wave at those who collect our waste and volunteer to support our residents who are shielding. This is a global crisis that cannot be fought and won without collective action at every level. Therefore, our actions, individually and collectively, within our communities, are vital in the battle to defeat COVID-19. So before I go any further, I'd personally like to thank everyone, members, staff, community groups, key workers, volunteers and the business community, supporting us all for what can only be described as a truly humbling show of strength, determination and kindness in adversity. Every act of compassion, no matter how small, makes a huge difference. Madam Chairman, I am proud to say that our collective efforts as a council mean that not only are we achieving our three priorities, we are doing so with such clarity, purpose and efficiency. I'd like to give a quick snapshot of just some of the fantastic work that is being undertaken 
by our officers and members. Since the lockdown started just over seven weeks ago, we have maintained a full waste service, collecting a total of 80,000 black, silver and green bins weekly. Ensured that urgent housing repairs are being completed within 24 hours of notification and that available staff are working on void properties to ensure quick reletting. Continued to support an increased number of homeless and emergency housing cases, including offering all rough sleepers known to us assistance and accommodation. Enabled our customer services team to operate remotely, providing support, not just with their usual services, but also handling calls about council tax, benefits and rents, thus enabling our revenue and benefits teams to deliver direct specialist support to residents and businesses affected by hardship. To support our businesses, we have realigned InvestSK with a special focus on business continuity and resilience. I'm proud to be able to say that as a result of the close working relationship between InvestSK and South Stephen District, District Council, SKDC remains one of the top councils in the country for delivering much needed grant aid swiftly into the bank accounts of those eligible businesses. The, sped, the speed with which the council responded was evident in the fact that more than 900 grants were paid out to eligible businesses within 24 hours of us receiving the money from government. To date, we have paid out more than £25 million to 2,115 businesses of the £31.7 million we received from government. In terms of business rates relief, figures released today show that we have been awarded, we have awarded more than 17 million to 686 eligible businesses. And the government recently announced a new discretionary fund to support businesses struggling in these difficult times. Those that do not currently fall into the previously announced schemes. I can assure you that the council will continue to effectively, efficiently and swiftly support the district's businesses in line with the government's guidance received yesterday on those grants. And when it comes to supporting our communities, one of the first things we did was to establish the SK Community Hub. This has been an unqualified success. The hard work of our team of redeployed staff who keep the hub operating for 11 hours a day, seven days a week. The hub has taken more than 1,000 calls and received nearly 300 emails from people either needing or offering help. And the hub works hand in glove with the Lincolnshire Resilience Forum in providing help when and where it is needed most looking after our most vulnerable residents and coordinating the work of the 1,500 volunteers from across our district. To support this work further, we swiftly established our befriending service. As leader of the council, I have written to nearly 18,000 potentially vulnerable residents, offering them support and regular contact during these times of isolation. Whilst the vast majority have said they have the support they need within their families and communities, Nearly 300 vulnerable residents have accepted our offer and are now receiving weekly telephone calls from our befriending service. Coping with COVID-19 has meant dramatically increased hours for many of our staff with little respite. 90 of our staff have redeployed to support critical services, whether that be staffing the SK Community Hub, to helping vulnerable residents through our befriending service, to training as waste collection loaders and drivers, so that our streets remain clean and our bins emptied. Importantly, this redeployment happened swiftly and smoothly, starting with the establishment of our incident room with two emergency planning teams with clear roles and responsibilities to provide that resilient central core that is essential to strong leadership and management in a crisis. Our coronavirus webpage, which has had more than 17,000 views, is frequently updated with any service changes and I'm providing our parish councils with a monthly newsletter to keep them informed. Naturally, we continue to work with and through our local media to communicate vital information to our communities. And an infographic we produced to visually show what we are doing to support our communities was listed by the Local Government Association as a good example of how councils are keeping their residents informed. However, I also know that the rurality and demographics of our district present particular challenges when it comes to tackling the impact of COVID-19 and ensuring our residents have the information they need. 
especially if their access to the internet is limited. Therefore, we produced a special COVID-19 edition of SK Today, which is being delivered this week. It is a shorter edition with a pure focus on providing the information our residents need to support them through this crisis. As I have already said, I cannot go through all of what we are doing to support those we serve, but I'm sure that you will appreciate the amount of hard work undertaken to deliver such a comprehensive and quality service so swiftly and relatively seamlessly, for which I thank our officers and members. During the lockdown, there have been a number of key decisions taken by me and the relevant cabinet member. But for the record, some of those decisions include the postponement of this year's Gravity Fields Festival, administration and distribution of the council tax hardship fund, a doubling of the ward member grant scheme, remuneration of street scene of the street scene team during COVID-19, deferral of rental income for specific organisations, temporary amendments to the Hackney carriage and private hire licensing, refuse and recycling policies, and the suspension of charges and enforcement action regarding the use of our own car parks. I also know that fellow members are rightly concerned about the financial impact of coping with COVID-19 on the Council's finances. You will all be aware that due to the past and present prudence, we went into this crisis on a sound financial footing. A finance report will be presented to the Finance, Economic Development and Corporate Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee on the 26th of this month. This will provide an updated position on the financial situation and how the Council is responding to and managing its finances. It is inevitable that we will need to update and reposition our budgets for this financial year and Cabinet will be working alongside all committees to review our spending plans for the year in context of the emerging financial outlook. This amended budget proposal will then be put before us in full Council in September for us to vote on. Please let me be clear that this is not a new budget, it will be a revision of our existing budget in light of the impact of COVID-19. As the Prime Minister said last week, nationally we have reached the peak of this wave of coronavirus. However, as you know, Lincolnshire is about two weeks behind the national curve. In our county, as of this morning, we have 996 confirmed cases of coronavirus and 15 care homes in isolation. To date, 19 care homes have been affected with 89 known cases and sadly, 186 people have lost their lives to the virus, 125 in hospital, 61 in care homes. Our hearts go out to all those who have lost a loved one to this terrible virus. The government is rightly concerned about further potential waves of the coronavirus and, as with any virus, mutations can never be ruled out. The reality is that impact of COVID-19 will be with us for some time, and that is quite a sobering thought. Each step taken in this global fight is a challenge, as it is being taken in unknown and uncharted territory. There simply isn't an instruction manual, and effective action relies on individuals as well as government policies and guidance. For our staff and our members, working patterns remain unchanged since Sunday's announcement. We were already progressing towards a more agile way of working to increase efficiency and best utilise our assets and our estate. The lockdown has propelled this way of working forward dramatically and we have shown just how agile we can be. In a matter of a couple of weeks, we moved from about 40 people a day working remotely online to more than 400 and that is such an achievement. In addition, our current way of working best protects our staff members, residents and businesses. Given that we are successfully meeting our three priorities which I set out earlier, there is no need to change how we work at present. It would be foolish to risk what has been achieved so far by easing restrictions too soon. However, as you would expect, I'm already working with our Cabinet and with partners across the county and the region, in particular the Lincolnshire Resilience Forum on the recovery phase. It will be for our local authorities to lead the recovery helping our businesses and our communities emerge from the lockdown with confidence and determination. And this will require the support of all members of this council. This crisis is far from over, but our council and our communities are stronger than ever. Resilience, kindness and compassion will win, and we will emerge from this crisis with courage and conviction. Thank you, Madam Chairman.
Thank you for that, uh, Leader. Um, I'm sure it was very much appreciated by all of us. I will now call on Karen Bradford, the Chief Executive, to confirm the presence of all members and officers who are in attendance at the meeting. Where a member doesn't respond to the Chief Executive, she will move on to call the next member. Once the list has been completed, the Chief Executive will recall the names of any member from whom no response was received. Where there is still no response, that member will be recorded as not having attended. Karen, over to you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Councillor Jackie Smith. Present. Councillor Breda Griffin. Present. Councillor Bob Adams. Present. Councillor Ashley Baxter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor David Bellamy. Present. Uh, to confirm, we've had apologies from Chris Ben, Councillor Chris Ben. Councillor Harish Balsit Nal Singh. Present. Councillor Mrs. Pam Bosworth. Mm -hmm. Councillor Bob Broughton. <laughs> Councillor Bob Broughton. Yeah. Councillor George Chivers. Present. Councillor Louise Clack. Yeah. Councillor Callum Cook. Present. Councillor John Cottier. Present. Councillor Helen Crawford. Present. Councillor John Dawson. Present. Councillor Phil Dilks. Present, Madam Chairman. Councillor Barry Dobson. Present. Councillor Mike Exton. Present. Councillor Paul Fellows. Present. Councillor Helen Borrell. Councillor Helen Gorrell. Present. Councillor Jan Hansen. <coughs> Councillor Jan ha Hansen. Councillor Graham Geel. Yep, here. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Present. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. Present. Councillor Anna Kelly. Present. Councillor Jane Kingman. Councillor Jane Kingman. Councillor Philip Knowles. Councillor Philip Knowles. Present. Councillor Matthew Lee. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Here. Councillor Annie Mason. Present. Councillor Penny Milnes. Present. Councillor Virginia Moran. Here. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. <coughs> Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Present. Councillor Dr. Peter Mosley. Yes, present. Councillor Robert Reed. Present. Councillor Nick Robbins. Present. Councillor Susan Sandal. Present. Councillor Ian Selby. Present. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Present. <laughs> Councillor Lee Steptoe. Present. Councillor Judy Stevens. Hello, yes, I'm here. Councillor Adam Stokes. Present. Councillor Ian Stokes. <laughs> Councillor Ian Stokes. He is here. I'll have to go and unmute his device for him. Present. Thank you. Councillor Jill Thomas. Present. 
Councillor Rosemary Trollope Ballou. <coughs> Present. Bellew. Bellew, sorry. <laughs> Apologies, <laughs> Rosemary. Don't worry. <laughs> Councillor Sarah Trotter. Present. Councillor Dean Ward. Present. Councillor Hannah Westrop. Present. Councillor Hilary Westrop. Present. Councillor Amanda Wheeler. Councillor Present. Mark. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mark Whittington. Here. Councillor Jane Wood. Present. Councillor Paul Wood. Yes, present. Councillor Sue Woolley. Present. Councillor Linda Wotton. Councillor Linda Wotton. She's here. Have you got your microphone on? Present. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Ray Wotton. Present. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just go back just to check? Um, Councillor Jan Hansen. Present. Thank you. And Councillor Jane Kingman. Yeah, I thought it was being controlled by them. Yeah, but I did. But I, I did. I put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Jane Kingman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Right, we will move on to item uh, four, disclosure of interests. Item agenda four covers the disclosure of interests by members. All members have an interest in agenda item six, which is an extension of the six month attendance rule. We will therefore note that on behalf of all members of the Council, so that the decision can be made on whether to grant an extension to the six-month foot rule, members will first be asked to grant themselves a dispensation, which we will do just before we consider that item. If any member would like to declare any other interest, can you please indicate in the chat now? No, if there are any members who wish to disclose an interest, uh, to invite them after their, afterwards, yeah. If during the debate it becomes clear to you that you have a disposable pecuniary interest in an item, you should indicate in the chat box by typing the word interest. I will call on you to disclose that interest and then you'll be required to leave the virtual meeting for the remainder of that item. Once that item of business is complete, the Head of Governance will invite you back into the meeting. We will now proceed with the next item of business. Item 5. Minutes of the meeting of Council on the 2nd of March 2020. This item is to confirm the minutes from the last meeting of Council on the 2nd of March 2020 as a correct record. I will mo move the minutes from the Chair. Any correction should be regarding the accuracy of the substance of the minutes, not typographical errors, which should have been raised with the Democratic Services team when the minutes were published. If you wish to make any corrections to the minutes, please indicate that you would like to speak using the chat function. And I believe Councillor Griffin is to second that. Councillor Griffin, the, the motion on the minutes. I propose that I second as they stand. Thank you. We will now vote on the minutes. You are voting on whether you agree that the minutes are a correct record. 
the chief executive will call out the name of each member present and you are asked to state for, against or abstain. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Councillor Jackie Smith. Four. Councillor Breda Griffin. Four. Councillor Bob Adams. Four. Councillor Ashley Baxter. Four. Councillor David Bellamy. Four. Councillor Harish Bishnal Singh. Four. Councillor Mrs. Pam Bosworth. Councillor Mrs. Pam Bosworth. Councillor Bob Broughton. Four. Councillor George Chivers. Four. Councillor Louise Clack. Four. Councillor Callum Cook. Four. Councillor John Cottier. Abstain. Councillor Helen Crawford. Four. Councillor John Dawson. Councillor John Dawson. Councillor Phil Tilks. Four. Councillor Bar Barry Dobson. Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Phil Paul Fellows. Four. Councillor Helen Gorrell. Four. Councillor Jan Hansen. Councillor Jan Han Hansen. Four. Councillor Graham Jill. Four. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Four. Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. Abstain, I didn't attend. Councillor Anna Kelly. Abstain. Councillor Councillor Philip Knowles. Four. Councillor Matthew Lee. Abstain, I was not present. I'm sure your thing's on here. Yeah. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Four. Councillor Annie Mason. Four. Councillor Penny Mills. Four. Councillor Virginia Moran. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Abstain, I was not attending. Councillor Dr. Peter Mosley. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Abstain, not present. Councillor Nick Robbins. Four. Councillor Susan Sandal. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Judy Smith. Four. Councillor Lee Steptoe. Four. Councillor Judy Stevens. Four. Councillor Adam Stokes. Four. Councillor Ian Stokes. Four. Councillor Jill Thomas. Four. Councillor Rosemary Trollope Bellew. Bellew. <laughs> I get this wrong every time. <laughs> Sorry, Rosemary. I abstained. I wasn't there. Okay. Councillor Sarah Trotter. Four. Councillor Dean Ward. Four. Councillor Hannah Westrop. Four. Councillor Hilary Westrop. Four. Councillor Amanda Wheeler. Abstain. Councillor Mark Whittington. Abstain. I wasn't Councillor Jane Wood. Four. <coughs> Councillor Paul Wood. Four. Councillor Sue Woolley. Abstain, I wasn't there. Councillor Ray, sorry, Councillor Linda Wotton. Four. Can you, Councillor Ray Wotton. Four.
Uh, Madam uh, Chairman, just for accuracy, uh, it is missing off the names of present uh, one of the Cabinet members, Councillor Annie Mason, if that could please be included on the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. We confirm that amendment. Madam Chairman, the minutes are carried. Thank you. Minutes agreed. We now move on to agenda item six, extension of six month attendance rule. Members are asked to consider granting an extension to the six month attendance rule. And before we proceed with this item, I would like to invite Councillor Cook to speak. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, obviously, in light of the impact of COVID-19, this has made it difficult uh, due to the fact that we suspended many meetings for members to attend. Therefore, um, obviously, I will be happily proposing the extension of the six-month attendance rule for anybody uh, that falls into that uh, place. Thank you. Is there any debate on the granting of a dispensation? Councillor Baxter. Um, I'd like to give way to Councillor Knowles first, please. Can I speak? Can I speak? Yes, you can speak. Thanks very much, Madam Chairman. Uh, I rather think that this piece of uh, legislation or this piece of emergency legislation was unnecessary um, and has consequences which we might not want them to have. Uh, the original uh, constitution, the rule originally, and I quote, says, if a member of a local authority fails throughout a period of six consecutive months from the date of their last attendance to attend any meeting of the authority, they will, unless the failure was due to some good reason approved by the authority before the expiry of that period, cease to be a member of the authority. It seems to me that the second part of that gives the opportunity for the authority to give dispensation to anybody who has failed to uh, attend during the six months even uh, virtually, um, so that, that he doesn't come uh, subject to the six months rule. Uh, so any, anybody coming up to that time mm -hmm. can give his reasons or her reasons for not being at the meeting. Let's take two councillors, councillor A, councillor B. Councillor A is conscientious, trying to do what he can. Let's say he was out of the country, he was subject to uh, quarantine, he came back, he was in hospital, he can't get hold of the uh, the uh, the uh, organization to get their virtual meeting done and misses six months of meetings. He presents that to the meeting and I'm sure that point at that point the meeting would give dispensation to give that man further time. Um, Councillor B doesn't attend, I don't think there's anybody in this situation but let's assume there is, doesn't attend, is negligent, doesn't bother, is no intention of, of fulfilling his duties and at the end of six months under the current rule he disappears. Under the new rule the situation has not changed for the person with a genuine reason not to attend. But for the man who is no intention of att attending, no interest in the council anymore, then he can go on indefinitely or until the emergency comes to a conclusion, which may be some while off yet, we'd like it to be some while off yet, and can continue to receive his allowance. So it allows people, somebody potentially allows people in who are, shouldn't be allowed in or should have been excluded and they can be kept in the council for some length of time when it is already a, a, a available, the, the mechanism to keep a councillor who is doing his best to attend but has been unable to perhaps because of illness, he already has that facility. And so I think that the, the proposal is unnecessary and has a consequence which we might not want. 
and and uh, so I I will be voting against the uh, the and I will urge people to do so. Thank you. Can I just ask uh, our monitoring officer to respond, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, the dispensation can only be granted by a meeting of full council. And that was the difficulty we faced when the COVID-19 um, emergency hit us, that there was no opportunity to call a meeting of full council in order to grant that dispensation. And a dispensation has to be granted uh, before the relevant meeting. There were at least three councillors who were at risk of um, losing their position on the authority through no fault of their own. Uh, and it's for that reason that we have brought this report. Um, as the coronavirus situation continues, um, it is uh, our recommendation, my recommendation, that this six-month dispensation be granted in the event that, through no fault of their own, a member cannot attend at a meeting because it may not be possible to call a full council meeting to grant that dispensation beforehand. I hope that answers. Yeah, I now call on Councillor Ashley Baxter, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, one point of clarification and one point of um, discussion, I suppose. The clarification is, are we saying that the clock will start on the 30th of September or the clock will close on the 30th of September? Are we saying that, that the six months will, if, if you don't attend within six months, before the 30th of September, then you risk being struck off? Or are we saying that from the 30th of September, we'll begin, the, the, the clock restarts again, uh, if you could clarify. But secondly, I, I will be voting against this because we, as, as far as I know, there are 54 or 55 of the councillors uh, that are supposed to be here today are here today. Uh, and. I don't expect that Councillor Ben will, will miss the next few meetings. And so there is no, but we're all now safe until November. And we have at least one, if, if not two or three, council meetings between now and November, should the situation get worse. So it's unnecessary. And yeah, it's unnecessary. So I'll be voting against it. Thank you. I'll call on, uh, on monitoring officer, please, to respond. Just to answer that uh, point of clarification, the, the uh, six month will start now, um, not in September. That's the intention of this paper. There are members who um, haven't been able to attend today, uh, and so it's just to make sure uh, all members are covered for that six month period to September. Any further comments from anyone? In that, take a vote on. Oh, sorry. Charmaine Morgan. Yeah, um, thank you. Just picking up the last point made, can we just then clarify what um, on page 21, what point two means? to grant an extension until the 30th of September, if we're saying that isn't the deadline, should that be there? Yeah. Yes, may I ask the monitoring officer, please, to respond? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, we, we have to look at uh, the previous six months as well. Uh, there was a period from when council meetings were taking place um, through the whole coronavirus period when we weren't able to have virtual meetings. And we've gone for the 30th of September because that will give members a chance uh, to attend when we do have the virtual meetings. If that needs to be revisited in September for whatever reason, we will revisit that. Um, but uh, it was hoped that that would be long enough to pick up um, from the previous six months as well, so that 
that gives enough of a length of time for the dispensation uh, to prevent members from being inadvertently uh, thrown off the council. I hope that clarifies. Thank you. Move to debate. Right, we will now take a vote on the granting of the dispensation. Councillor Dilks. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Before we vote, could you can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, could you just clarify, please, that because of today's meeting, everyone has, if I might say, wiped the slate clean and starts afresh, except Councillor Ben, who is a good attender, um, if, if I might put it that way. Can you just clarify that everybody starts from today, because, because everybody is here at this virtual meeting, they start with that clean sheet, apart from Councillor Ben. Can you just clarify that, please? Yes, that is correct. Then it would seem this is totally unnecessary. Move to the taking uh, the, the vote. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, the what we're voting on at the present time is the granting of the dispensation. So, uh, Council. Councillor Jackie Smith. <laughs> Councillor Breeder Griffin. Councillor Breeder Griffin. Four. Councillor Bob Adams. Four. Councillor Ashley Baxter. Against. Councillor David Bellamy. Four. Seems to me in that. Councillor Harish Bisnalsing. Abstain. Councillor Pam Bosworth. <laughs> Councillor Pam Bosworth. Councillor Bob Broughton. Four. Can I just reconfirm, was that Councillor Mrs Pam Bosworth, four? Can you hear me? I can now. Oh, right. yes, four. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bob Broughton. Yeah, four. Councillor George Chivers. Four. Councillor Louise Clack. Four. Councillor Kellum Cook. Four. Councillor John Cottier. Four. Councillor Helen Crawford. Four. Councillor John Dawson. Four. Councillor John Dawson, sorry, I didn't hear you. Four. Councillor, I can now, thank you. Councillor Phil Dilks. Against. Councillor Barry Dobson. Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Paul Fellows. Councillor Paul Fellows. Four. Thank you. Councillor Helen Gorrell. Four. Councillor Jan Hansen. Abstain. Councillor Graham Jill. Four. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Four. Councillor Rosemary Cabra Brown. Four. Councillor Anna Kelly. Against. Councillor Jane. Councillor Philip Knowles. Against. Councillor Matthew Lee. Four. Councillor Nikki Manfield. Four. Councillor Abby Mason. Four. Councillor Penny Mills. Four. 
Councillor Virginia Moran. Against. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Against. Councillor Dr. Peter Mosley. For. Councillor Pete. Councillor Robert Reed. For. Councillor Nick Robbins. For. Councillor Susan Sandal. For. Councillor Ian Selby. For. Councillor Judy Smith. For. Councillor Lee Steptoe. Against. Councillor Judy Stevens. For. Councillor Adam Stokes. For. Councillor Ian Stokes. For. Councillor Jill Thomas. For. Councillor Rosemary Trollope Bellew. For. <laughs> Councillor Sarah Trotter. Councillor Sarah Trotter. Oh. Councillor Dean Ward. For. Councillor Hannah Westrop. For. Councillor Hilary Westrop. For. Councillor Amanda Wheeler. Abstain. Councillor Mark Whittington. For. Councillor Jane Wood. For. Councillor Paul Wood. For. Councillor Sue Woolley. For. Councillor Linda Wotton. For. Councillor Ray Wotton. For. Karen, it's Councillor Trotter, that's for. I think I was a bit late coming in. Thank you, Councillor Trotter. Uh, motions, Karen. Carried, lead, uh, Chairman. Yes. So the extension to the 30th of September is granted. Can't, Chairman, that's just for the dispensation, not for the... Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Following that uh, vote, I'd now like to propose the extension formally. Do I second? Yeah, I second. I will second that. go straight to the vote. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Council Jackie Smith. For... Councillor Breeder Griffin. For. Councillor Bob Adams. For. Councillor Ashley Baxter. I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Chair and Chief Executive. Can you clarify what we're now voting for? I thought we just voted on points one and two. Uh, Councillor Baxter, you have to vote on approving a dispensation before you actually can agree the substantive motion that's being put forward here. So the first first vote that you've just taken was to agree for the dis to give yourselves a dispensation uh, and that vote was carried now we're on on to the f second recommendation is to, to give yourself an extension till the 30th of September thank so you for that. thank you for that clarification I'm against thank you Councillor Baxter uh, Councillor David Bellamy for Councillor Councillor Harish Balsing Nalsing. Yeah, this not saying. This not saying. <laughs> or this not saying, either way. Uh, I am abstaining again. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies, Councillor, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. 
Yeah, that's quite all right. Thank you. I'll, very I'll get it right at one point. It's a difficult name, but it's just <laughs> sort of a bis not sing. Bis now sing. Not. You just press the N A U T H as not. Not. It's not it's not sing. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bob and uh, Councillor Mrs. Pam Bosworth. For. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Councillor Bosworth. Yes. Councillor Bob Broughton. For. Councillor George Chivers. For. Councillor Louise Clack. For. Councillor Kellum Cook. Uh, Cook with an E4, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Cook. Councillor John Cottier. Four. Councillor Helen Crawford. Four. Councillor John Dawson. Four. Councillor Phil Dilks. Against. Councillor Barry Dobson. Councillor Barry Dobson. Sorry, four. Sorry, man. Four. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Pleasure. Cou <laughs> Councillor Phil Exton. Oh. Council Paul Fellows. Abstain. Council Helen Gorrell. Four. Council Jan Han Hansen. Abstain. Council Graham Geel. Four. Council Gloria Johnson. Four. Council Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. <coughs> Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. Four. Thank you. Councillor Anna Kelly. Against. Councillor Jane Kingman. Sorry, she's got apologies. Councillor Philip Knowles. Against. Councillor Matthew Lee. Four. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Four. Councillor Annie Mason. Four. Councillor Penny Mills. Four. Councillor Vir Virginia Moran. Against. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Against. Councillor Dr. Peter Mosley. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four. Councillor Nick Robbins. Four. Councillor Susan Sandal. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Four. Councillor Lee Steptoe. Against. Councillor, Ju Councillor Judy Stevens. And four. Councillor Adam Stokes. Four. Councillor Ian Stokes. Four. Councillor Jill Thomas. Four. Councillor Rosemary Trollope. Bellu. Bellu. <laughs> I'm going to do the outtakes later. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Sarah Trotter. Four. Councillor Dean Ward. Four. Councillor Hannah Westrop. Four. Councillor Hilary Westrop. Four. Councillor Amanda Wheeler. Abstain. Councillor Mark Whittington. Four. Councillor Jane Wood. Councillor Jane Wood. Four. Shall I make sure our microphone's on? Thank you, Paul. That's it. Four. Four. Councillor Paul Wood. Four. Councillor Sue Woolley. Four. Councillor Linda Wotton. Four. And Councillor Ray Wotton. Four. Thank you, members. <laughs> right, that's is now carried. If we move on then to item 7, amendments to the constitution 
the provision uh, to provide clarity and accountability in emergency scenarios. Uh, the Council is asked to consider proposed amendments to the Constitution uh, that will uh, assist this. And whilst the recommendations are being proposed and seconded, uh, may I suggest that if you wish to speak, uh, you indicate in the chat box. Thank you. So I'll now invite Councillor Linda Wood Wooten to propose the recommendations in the report, together with the additional point of which members have already been notified. Linda Wooten, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The coronavirus pandemic has meant that we've had to take a look at how we do things differently. As a council, we've had to react quickly to make sure we can continue to deliver services and to ensure that the decisions that are made are as transparent as they can possibly be. As the council has responded to the situation, We've referred to the Constitution as our manual. We've also spent time looking at the responses of other local authorities and the provisions that they were drawing on from their constitutions to support their response. In doing this, three areas were identified that could benefit from greater clarity because the Constitution was not explicit these areas are the powers of the chief executive, contingency arrangements in the event of the absence for the leader of the council, and arrangements for postponing meetings. Research was undertaken and wording drafted that could help provide clarity during the remainder of the COVID-19 emergency response period and any other future emergencies to which the Council may need to respond. In proposing the recommendations within the report, I would like to make an addition in relation to the emergency powers of the Chief Executive. The addition is to list as Roman numeral three on page 26 of the agenda pack, the words informing the opposition, sorry, apologize, informing the opposition group leaders of the action that has been taken. I move the recommendation, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And I'd like to call on Councillor Mike Exton to second the proposals with that addition. Councillor Mike Exton. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm gladly oh. support and second the motion preserved, presented as well as the amendment. I think it's important that we have these powers to ensure the, the run, smooth running of the council. Thank you. I call on Charmaine Morgan. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, the um, recommendation which has been made um, by Councillor Wooden is a positive step forward. Um, it was hugely disappointing that um, with the recent events that um, we were not consulted at all prior to the closure of the Council, nor pulled in to any of the discussions regarding any of the emergency arrangements. My only concern is that the wording that we would be informed in a way we're in a similar position, or at least we'll be told what's happening, we were informed this time, but the point is we weren't consulted. And I, I have looked to see what other councils are doing. Uh, I notice we have as well, that the SKDC has as well. And Hastings, for example, actually requires four members of the cabinet and a member of the opposition to be consulted for any key decisions. Um, and I appreciate that you've got two 
uh, leaders of opposition in SKDC, but my feeling is that it may not always be practical or possible. We appreciate that. But where it is, and I believe in this case it was, we should have been consulted and consulted as opposed to told what was going on. So we had an opportunity to work together and to make a positive impact um, as we move forward. So ideally, I would just like to change the word um, to for being informed to consulted. Thank you. So that's a, that's a proposed amendment to the amendment. Thank you. Can Councillor Paul Wood. Hello, no. Madam Chairman. Thank you. Yes. No. Uh, uh, are you t are you, I just wanted to clarification. Are we taking Councillor Wooden's amendment now, the subsequent amendment, or are we talking about the original proposition put forward by Councillor Wooden? Councillor Wooden, you're muted. Councillor Wooden, you're muted. Surely Charmaine should be asked if she has the seconder. Yes. Thank you. Can, if, I could, if I can just uh, confirm, we are debating, uh, as it was put forward before the council meeting, we are debating the recommendation with the amendment that Councillor Linda Wotton proposed. Councillor Charmaine uh, Morgan has put an amendment, further amendment forward, but at this point has not been seconded. So we are still debating the original uh, recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Wood. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Madam Chairman, then, yeah, I would like to comment on that. I, I support the uh, proposals and particularly thank uh, uh, Councillor Mrs. Wharton for the amendment uh, uh, notifying uh, opposition leaders. Uh, this was discussed at the group leaders meeting uh, the other day uh, as an amendment that we're putting in. And I'm pleased that I think we should be uh, notified about it. And I'm quite happy that we're, we're notified. Uh, as, as I know, I've had several conversations with Karen, and I'd also like to thank uh, Councillor Callum Cook for, for his involvement in it. I, I don't see a problem in it, whether it's notified or consulted. I think there's very little difference, to be quite honest. I think it's a mute point. So I would encourage uh, the independent group to actually vote for it, uh, and I particularly vote for the amendment putting in uh, notification of opposition group leaders. Uh, thank you. Step two. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm uh, very happy to uh, second Councillor Morgan's proposal. Um, I'd like to generally uh, applaud the administration in general, the way that they dealt with uh, this, this coronavirus crisis. Um, any information that I, that I personally have asked for, I've gotten very speedily. Um, I've gone on record in the Grantham Journal as um, congratulating the administration for the measures that, it have t that it's taken, obviously with one or two pieces of uh, constructive uh, criticism or opposition with the emphasis on the word uh, constructive. Um, but I, I, do, I do support Councillor Morgan's um, amendment to the amendment, as it were, um, and I've got to pick Councillor Wood up on what he said uh, a second ago. He said that there's no difference between um, the word consulted or the word notified. Yes, there is. There's a very clear difference. The word consulted su uh, suggests um, that you've, uh, you've been asked your opinion, you've been asked what you think. Notified is very clearly being told what's going to happen. There is a clear difference on that basis. I'm very happy to support my group leader in seconding her proposal. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
are there any further comments? Yes, Ashley. I give Councillor Baxter. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I've, as you can see, I've put the questions in the chat box, uh, which are not relevant to the amendment. Um, I, I hesitate to disagree with the independent group leader over whether or not consult and notify are the same thing. I don't think they are, and I don't think we have been consulted enough during the previous six weeks. So uh, my questions are: Who decides when exceptional circumstances become an emergency? Uh, is it is it the government? Is it a decree? Is it when national legislation comes out, or is it at the whim of the leader and chief executive, or is it somewhere in between? Uh, and secondly, who decides when the emergency is over and things go back to something like normal? Uh, can I ask the uh, uh, monitoring officer to respond, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. So in response to um, Councillor Baxter's question, who decides when exceptional circumstances become an emergency, um, if members can just look at the paper that's drafted, page 26, um, paragraph C, talks about um, postponing meetings, etc. And I'll just read the bit in italics. It says, where exceptional circumstances uh, apply, um, the chairman of the council, following consultation with the vice chairman and the chief executive and the leaders of the political groups, um, consider, etc. So, uh, in terms of, uh, is it you know who decides? It is that body of people who would be consulted um, by the chairman of the council before any decision is made. And in terms of what, uh, who decides what is an exceptional. Um, situation. We do define that a little bit later in the same paragraph, uh, and we define that as um, anything that would involve health and safety issues, e.g. a pandemic, civil emergency, inclement weather, etc. So um, I hope that clarifies that there are very few exceptional circumstances that are envisaged by this, um, and there is a, a body of members who would be consulted to give that assurance that this would only be used in exceptional circumstances where all of those different people are, are in agreement. I hope that answers. Thank you. Um, that answers the first question and I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, it seems that we have learned at least one lesson from this outbreak that people, we should be consulting more widely with opposition groups. Uh, but the second question about the all clear, could you answer that please? So I believe you're responding. So, Madam Chairman, we don't define in the proposed amendments who would be who would decide when that emergency is over. But I think it's uh, a matter of um, uh, common sense that um, the group that had been consulted in the first place would be able to decide when that emergency is over. Um, I think to be too prescriptive in uh, the constitution would lead to unintended consequences. So uh, our view is that it is generally um, very easy to recognise when a particular emergency situation is over. And as monitoring officer, um, I would be looking at that also closely. So there are various checks and balances already in the governance uh, framework that we have to ensure that these powers are only exercised in such periods as when there is truly an emergency. Uh, Councillor Callum Cook. Right, Anna Kelly. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. I support what Councillor Steptoe has said. He said there is a very great difference between consultation and notification. And the word that the monitoring officer drew our attention to on page 26 in that paragraph was about consultation with opposition leaders. So I think as we began this council with 
our new leader, it was made very clear to us that we were working in a spirit of cooperation. So perhaps this is an opportunity to demonstrate that opportunity for consultation and consideration across all the groups as the leader suggested we should do as we move forward. Thank you. Right. I call on Harish Bisna Singh, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I was going to raise the actual precise point. I do agree with Councillor Steptoe with regard to the consultation, probably a greater involvement with the, uh, uh, across the council wide, across the spectrum of all the councillors. However, Shaheen, uh, our monitoring officer, just pointed out, I was going to raise uh, on the option uh, uh, paragraph C, uh, of that the executive and leaders of the political groups. Does that mean that is a full consultation so with it, or is it just the notification will just end there? Uh, so I'm re reasonably assured that probably it means consultations, and we'll have input uh, on it, because we are all in it together. I think we shall work together. I think in general we are doing quite, quite well, and thank you very much for what actually SKDC is is doing. Uh, we all are to, together in our different ways contributing to the uh, betterment of our community. Thank you. Councillor Phil Dilks. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I would echo what colleagues have said about, um, and, and I thank Kellum, our, the, the council leader, and Karen, the chief executive, and the whole team, cabinet included, and the whole team of staff in the early decisions that have been taken uh, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, and I think we all have a duty to support those um, because um, of, of the emergency that we were in. But we are at a, at a different stage now in the pandemic and the emergency, and we have this meeting today. Previously, we hadn't got a meeting, and those decisions had to be taken quickly, and I recognise that. But today we have an opportunity to um, regulate things and put things right. That's the whole purpose of today's meeting, as I understand it. And I echo what Councillor Anna um, said, um, and, and uh, speaking as a fellow independent, um, I recall, uh, like I'm sure we all do, the words of the leader when he became the leader um, uh, less than a year ago, talked about and promised a new spirit of collaboration, and collaboration across the council uh, was promised. And this, and this is what we're doing today. Notification is not collaboration. Notification is saying, we'll let you know what we've done. done. Um, consultation is surely saying, um, um, saying, this is what we're thinking of doing. Can I have your views on it? And it does, you know, having heard those views of uh, the independents and the Labour group, would, would, not, would not stop the leader then making the decision that he or she, that, that he wishes to make. It doesn't stop that, it's just, it is, what we're calling for is the collaboration that was promised less than a year ago. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Councillor Hanson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I have to agree with my colleagues. As an independent, um, there is a big difference between consultation and dictating to. Um, however, I'm also mindful of, um, in the case of an emergency, unnecessary bureaucracy. And if there is an emergency on, you know, we don't we need to get involved in um, unnecessary debate. So it's a, a very uh, uh, well, it depends on the in, individual councillors how they feel about it. But uh, in an emergency, things need to be speeded up. So, um, you know, I'm sort of open-minded about this. So um, I shall give it a little bit further thought before the vote. Thank you, Madam Chairman.
Councillor Paul Wood. Yes, uh, thank you again, Madam Chairman, for letting me come back. Uh, there seems to be a lot of the debate over notify, notification or consultation. Uh, and I've been, I've been picked up for saying it's virtually the same thing. Yes, of course I realise notification and consultation are, by the words means difference. My implications were that when I've been notified, I've also been consulted about these things. If you want to change it to consulted, I, I don't mind that. But I know when Kellam has spoke to me, Councillor Cook, and Karen has spoke to me, they have consult, they have notified me and consulted me. So, as le speaking as leader of the independent group, I feel I have been quite notified and consulted. Now, if people want to change it to consulted, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but I don't want people thinking that we have not had full notification. We have. So please. The independent members, please bear that in mind when you're voting. I personally, as your leader, do not have a problem with how I've been consulted or notified or whatever you like to put it. And I don't think we should make a great deal about it. Thank you. Chairman? Yes. May I, may I speak? Yes, Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, well, obviously, just to sort of continue what uh, Councillor Wood was just making the point with, obviously, we had our group leaders meeting uh, the other day, which uh, unfortunately Charmaine couldn't attend. Um, and Councillor Wood and I came up with the agreement that we would use the word uh, inform. Um, now, obviously, we work under the strong leader model at the Council. So um, the difference between informing and consult, Ultimately, uh, decisions have got to be taken, and those will be taken by those in consultation with the chief executive. Um, as I've always tried to do, I always like to work with opposition group leaders. I think Paul and I have a good working relationship, and hopefully I can build a better relationship with uh, Councillor Morgan. So I would, I would reiterate at the moment that I would support the word inform um, as the amendment which was agreed at the group leaders meeting the other day. Councillor Judy Stevens. Councillor Judy Stevens. Sorry, I forgot I was muted. Yeah, I just sometimes think that we forget that we have a chairman for a purpose. And the chairman is to represent the group. And in this case, the chairman, Councillor Paul Wood, has been recognised as such and has represented the group. It's sometimes not possible to have the whole group represented in a conversation. That is why we have a chair. It's a simple proposition. That's what happens. And other people within the group may then feel that they haven't been consulted, but it's because Quite rightly, there is a, a you know, there, there is a structure to enable this to happen, and this is what's happened. And I think the independent group should support their leader in this. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. So, uh, thank you for for allowing me to come back. Yeah, first first of all, um, the reason that uh, actually I raised this point in our previous um, full meeting. Um, I, I made the point that that we had we hadn't been consulted, which which was unfortunate. And I will say that I actually made that point, having had a discussion with Councillor Wood. So I'm slightly surprised at his comment. But there is the reason I raised it, and I would accept in certain circumstances. For example, in an emergency, in short notice. You just have to, as the point's been rightly made, you have to go with it. You have to do what you've got to do to get things done. The reason I, I raised this was because in this situation, even though it was an emergency, um, actually, we had quite a long run up to it. And we were notified, which is the point I'm making. It's the key difference. We were all notified of the decisions that had been made by email subsequently. So the word notification did not actually mean consultation. And if, in fact, what's really happening in this debate, it seems to me, is a number of people are really saying that consultation and notification are perfectly acceptable. 
so therefore, to be honest, I can't see what the issue is in adding that word consultation. If you want to add the phrase when possible, just to clarify, in a, you know, if we had a flash flood and you have to make a decision there and then fair dues, that's what you've got to do. But what we're saying is where it's possible, then then that consultation is necessary. Thank you. Okay, I, I think now we should move to the vote. Are we going to ask? No, are we going to ask Councillor Wharton to sum up? No, we're going to vote if you have a vote. Oh, right. <coughs> Thank you, members. So we are now going to the vote on the amendment uh, as proposed by Councillor Charmaine Morgan and Councillor Lee, and seconded by Councillor Lee Steptoe, and this is to change the word inform to consult. Um, so this isn't the motion, uh, the recommendation that put, has been put by, by Linda Wotton. This is the amendment to the original. So we're now voting on the amendment to change the word to for the opposition leaders to be informed, to the opposition leaders to be consulted. So I'll go to the vote. Uh, Counts, Councillor Jackie Smith. Four. Four. Is that right? Uh, Councillor. What, what are we? What? Just, just to clarify, Chairman, we're voting on changing, changing the original proposals put by Councillor Linda Wotton to inform. Uh, there's a number of, of recommendations, and also to include to inform the opposition leaders. Uh, this this amendment is to change from inform the opposition le leaders of the opposition to consult with the opposition leaders. So it's a difference between inform and consult. So you you are voting now on as if you support the amendment made by Councillor Charmaine Morgan and Councillor Lee Steptoe. Yeah. No. Again. Against. <laughs> <laughs> I, und I understand there's a point of clarification by Councillor Phil, Phil Dilks before we go further with the vote. Uh, thank you for allowing me to put that, um, and, and I do apologise. I'd, um, I'd, I'd put it in earlier and um, it, it didn't appear on the screen. I'm, I couldn't have pressed the send button. Uh, thank, thank you for allowing me to come back. Um, I, I just want to say, if I'm, if I may, um, before I get to the point of clarification, of course, the independent group is not subject to a party political whip on such matters, oh. and we, as independents, are not asking for all members of the independent group to be consulted. That's not what we're asking for. Um, and um, w w the, the point of clarification I'd like to ask is, is the notification that we're about to vote for, is that tied down that that happens before the decision is made by the leader? Or is it simply notifying, you know, does it allow the leader to just simply notify after the decision has been taken? That's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dilks. In the proposals are set before you today, if it is to inform, uh, as inform says, it's to inform you after the decision is taken either by the chief exec or by the leader. It isn't, if it was to consult, you would be consulted before the decision is taken by either the chief exec or the strategic di director if the chief exec wasn't available and the leader uh, of council. I hope that Thank clarifies. You. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. So I uh, so so that we're voting now to clarify. We're voting. We're voting on the amendment proposed by Ch Councillor Charmaine Morgan, seconded by Steve Lee Steptoe, to change in form to consult. Uh, that was the proposal put forward to Council. So uh, we will move to the vote. Uh, I had called uh, for the vote of Councillor Jackie Smith. 
against. Uh, Councillor Breeder Griffin. Against. Councillor Bob Adams. Against. Councillor Ashley Baxter. For. Councillor David Bellamy. Against. Councillor Harish Baust Now Singh. <laughs> Councillor Bish Now Singh. <laughs> Harish, Councillor Harish, Bisnal Singh. Yeah, Bisnal Singh, no problem. Uh, thank you. I'm abstaining. Councillor Bo Pam Bosworth. Against. Councillor Bob Broughton. Against. Councillor George Chivers. Against. Councillor Louise Clack. Abstain. Councillor Kellum Cook. Against. Councillor John Cottier. Against. Councillor Helen Crawford. Again. Councillor John Dawson. Against. Councillor Phil Dilks. For. Councillor Barry Dobson. Against. Councillor Mike Exton. Against. Councillor Paul Fellows. For. Councillor Helen Gorrell. Against. Councillor Jan Hansen. Abstain. Councillor Graham Geel. Against. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Against. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabery Brown. <coughs> Against. Councillor Anna Kelly. For. Councillor Jane Kingman. Against. Yeah. Councillor Philip Knowles. Councillor Philip Knowles. Four. Thank you. Councillor Matthew Lee. Against. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Against. Councillor Annie Mason. Against. Councillor Penny Mild. Against. Councillor Virginia Moran. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Peter Mosley. Against. Councillor Robert Reed. Against. Councillor Nick Robbins. Against. Councillor Susan Sandal. Abstain. <coughs> Councillor Ian Selby. Abstain. Councillor Judy Smith. Against. Councillor Lee Steptoe. Four. Councillor Judy Stevens. Councillor Judy Stevens. The meeting according to the chat. Madam Chief Executive, I think uh, both councillors Lee and Wharton have made uh, the same points about the opportunity to speak uh, before the vote took place. Sorry, I hadn't seen those at all, Councillor Cook. Um, do they want to speak on, did they want to speak on the amendment or the substantive recommendation? Madam Chair, uh, Madam Chief Executive. <laughs> My point was the constitution is quite clear as the mover of the original motion or amendment or piece of uh, 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 we're discussing, uh, Councillor Wooden, Mrs. Wooden, should have been given the opportunity to speak and uh, called the vote. We need to stick to the rules. Councillor Lee, you are very much correct that Councillor Linda Wooden should have had the right of reply to the. Uh, motion uh, or the amendment before we went to the vote but uh, sorry I didn't see that on the chat box um, so uh, do we do you want to you can either I'll just speak to the chairman to see how she wants to handle this now but thank you Matt Councillor Lee for raising <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, all members, uh, as we hadn't followed the constitution and allowed the proposer of the, of the recommendation the right of reply uh, to the to the proposed amendments, I'm going to suspend uh, the uh, the vote and allow Councillor Linda Wotton to address council. Councillor Linda Wotton, can you please ensure that your camera is on on your um, uh, while speaking? Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me now? So she can't get back in. Yes, we can now hear you, Councillor Watson, but can Oh, you, you can hear me now. Can you please put your video on, please? That's it. That's it. Okay. Yes. Yes, you're fine to proceed. Okay, thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you to my fellow members and the Chief Executive. Uh, I'm afraid things took off and were beyond me, but um, I listened to members' uh, debate, and I could understand the thinking behind the questions, but I'm quite happy, as I'd already made the recommendation that it's been seconded, I'm still quite happy what's been put forward originally, and I'm quite happy for proceedings to carry on. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And thank you for the opportunity to come in, as I should have been allowed to. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wharton. We now then return... Uh, to the vote on the amendment as as put forward by Councillor Shawnee Morgan uh, and Councillor Lee Stepto. And apologies again for not bringing you back in because we, we'd missed it on the chat. Can we ensure that the chat is also used for uh, the telling us if you would like to speak because they're uh, and uh, and not um, emojis? Thank you. So. <laughs> Thank you. Can I can I now go to the the vote? As we're saying, this is on the amendment. Uh, Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Breeder Griffin. Councillor Breeder Griffin. Which, which are we voting on? The, the last one by Charmaine? Yes, it is, yes. Councillor Griffin. Right. Against. Councillor Bob Adams. Against. Councillor Ashley Baxter. For. Councillor David Bellamy. Against. Councillor Harish Bausnowsing. Bisnowsing. Bisnowsing. <laughs> Staying again, thank you. Right. People can't see you because you're did, did, Was that abstain? Yeah. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Pam Bosworth. Against. Councillor Bob Broughton. Against. Councillor George Chivers. Against. Councillor Louise Clack. Abstain. Councillor Callum Cook. Yeah. Councillor John Cottier. Against. Councillor Helen Crawford. Against. Councillor John Dawson. Against. Councillor Phil Dilks. For. Councillor Barry Dobson. Against. Councillor Mike Exton. Against. Councillor Paul Fellows. For. Councillor Helen Gorrell. Against. Councillor Jan Hansen. Abstain. Councillor Graham Geel. Still against. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Against. Councillor Rose Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. 
Against. Councillor Anna Kelly. For. Councillor Jane Kingman. Against. Councillor Philip Knowles. For. Councillor Matthew Lee. Against. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Yeah. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Against. Councillor Annie Mason. Against. Councillor Penny Mills. Against. Councillor Virginia Moran. For. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. For. Councillor Dr. Peter Mosley. Against. Councillor Robert Reed. Against. Councillor Nick Robbins. Against. Councillor Susan Sandal. Abstain. Councillor Ian Selby. Abstain. Councillor Judy, Mrs. Judy Smith. I think Councillor Smith has lost her power. Oh, Councillor Judy Hello. Smith. Oh, sorry. Hello. Councillor Hello, Judy Karen. Smith. Hello. Hello, Karen. Hello. Can I take your vote, Councillor Judy Smith? Against. Thank you. Councillor Lee Stepto. For. Councillor Judy Stevens. Against. Councillor Adam Stokes. Against. Councillor Ian Stokes. <laughs> Councillor Ian Stokes. <laughs> Councillor Jill Thomas. Against. Councillor Rosemary Trollope Bellew. Against. Councillor Sarah Trotter. Against. Councillor Dean Ward. Against. Councillor Hannah Westrop. Against. Councillor Hilary Westrop. Councillor Hilary Westrop. Did you get that? It's against. Thank you. Councillor Amanda Wheeler. For. Councillor Mark Whittington. Against. Councillor Jane Wood. Against. Councillor Paul Wood. Against. Councillor Sue Woolley. Against. Councillor Linda Wotton. Against. Councillor Ray Wotton. Against. Chairman, as that uh, proposed amendment to the original recommendation uh, falls, uh, we then now need move to move back to the substantive recommendation and take the vote. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. So we are now voting on the substantive motion with the addition of part three that, that members, members of the of the opposition leaders are informed of the decisions that are taken. Councillor Jackie Smith. Sorry, just please please hold. Yep. Uh, Councillor Linda Wooden, would you like to make any further comments? I have no further comments to make, Madam Chairman. Just continue with the vote, please. Thank you. Right, I'll call the vote then. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairman. So, Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Breda Griffin. Four. Councillor Bob Adams. Four. Councillor Ashley Baxter. Four. Councillor Ashley Baxter. Four. Four. 
Councillor David Bellamy. Oh. Councillor Harish Biz Nowsing. For Councillor Pom Mrs. Pom Bosworth. For Councillor Bob Broughton. For Councillor George Chivers. For Councillor Louise Clack. For Councillor Callum Cook. Councillor John Cottier. Councillor Helen Crawford. Councillor John Dawson. Councillor Phil Dilks. Councillor Barry Dobson. Councillor Mike Exton. Councillor Paul Fellows. Councillor Helen Gorrell. Councillor Jan Hansen. Abstain. Councillor Graham Geel. I'm four. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Four. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabery Brown. Four. Councillor Anna Kelly. Four. Councillor Jane Kingman. Four. Councillor Philip Knowles. Four. Councillor Matthew Lee. Four. Councillor Nikki Manterfield. Four. Councillor Annie Mason. Four. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Virginia Moran. Abstain. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Councillor Dr. Peter Mosley. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Smiling Thor. Councillor Nick Robbins. Four. Councillor Susan Sandal. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Four. Councillor Lee Steptoe. Abstain. Councillor Judy Stevens. Four. Councillor Adam Stokes. Four. Councillor Ian Stokes. <laughs> Councillor Ian Stokes. Four. Thank you. Councillor Jill Thomas. Four. Councillor Rosemary Trollope Bellew. Four. Councillor Sarah Trotter. Four. Councillor Dean Ward. Four. Councillor Hannah Westrop. Four. Councillor Hilary Westrop. Four. Councillor Amanda Wheeler. Four. Councillor Mark Whittington. Four. Councillor Jane Wood. Four. Councillor Paul Wood. Uh, four, as the original agreement was, yes. Thank you, Councillor Wood. Councillor Sue Woolley. Four. Councillor Linda Wooten. Four. Councillor Ray Wooten. Four. Uh, the, the members that I didn't get a response from was Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Abstain. Thank you. Madam Chairman, the, the vote is carried. Right now, the uh, last uh, item on the agenda, uh, an update from the leader of the council, decisions taken during the um, COVID-19 response period, um, including decisions, etc. And I call on Councillor Cook to make the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. So what I propose to do with your indulgence is we will go through the reports and go through each individual item. And then obviously, if there are any specific questions from members, um, then obviously I know um, all of the cabinets are also online and um, to answer any of those questions relating to their portfolios. Um, so effectively, the report in front of you is the urgent decisions that were taken uh, in consultation with the chief executive to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. 
Um, so if I just talk us through, uh, so obviously Appendix 1. So this was just an updated list of the cabinet structure and delegations from myself as leader. Obviously with the cab meetings of cabinet suspended, obviously the key decisions that would have been taken by the cabinet uh, were moved to uh, myself uh, in consultation with the cabinet members. Uh, so if there's no points on that, I think that's all self-explanatory. Uh, agenda item number two, so in consultation with uh, Councillor Rosemary Trollope bellew uh, it, the decision was taken to postpone the Gravity Fields Festival until 2022. Obviously, this report was published on the 9th of April and was effective on the 23rd of April. Obviously, the reasons that uh, were given for that postponement was due to the fact that there would be no guarantee that uh, movement and uh, gathering restrictions would be lifted by September in order to put on a successful event for Grantham. Obviously, the absence of Arts Council funding, with the Arts Council now looking to support more community-based uh, events during the coronavirus crisis uh, following this. Um, obviously, we could have postponed it until next year, but then obviously at the moment we've still got the uh, Gravity Fields Festival uh, in that year as well. Um, are there any questions on Appendix 2? Not. I am watching the uh, chat function, so I'll continue to move through the uh, report. If you're happy with that, Chairman. Um, Appendix three is in relation to the Council Tax Hardship Fund. Um, so obviously a decision was taken in consultation with our Councillor Adam Stokes. That decision was made on the 11th of May and due to come into effect on the 19th of May, uh, which is a special date for me. Um, the 924,000 awarded to Council from Government uh, to fund a Council Tax Hardship uh, for all working age claimants in the district. The allocation of funding is directed by the supporting guidance. Um, an award of £150 will be made available to uh, each eligible working age claimant to reduce their council tax bill for 2020 2021. Um, and the grant will also be used to award to new cases that arise uh, during the financial year. And then the remaining grant will be used to respond to other hardship cases that may be considered by the council, particularly for those affected by employment issues um, arising from the COVID-19 uh, 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 COVID pandemic. Moving, uh, Councillor, oh, sorry. Uh, so moving on to appendix number four, the ward member grant scheme. Obviously, uh, a decision was taken on the 23rd of March to increase uh, the allowance from £500 uh, to £1,000 to support us all in our wards uh, to support those good causes and groups that need support during the coronavirus crisis. And uh, Councillor Penny Milnes, I've got indication you'd like to speak on Appendix 4, please. Um, yes, thank you. I, I'm speaking as an independent uh, ward councillor and I would like to endorse the positive view of the Council's response to the crisis. Um, I was delighted to learn of the reinstatement of the £1,000 to allow for an extra £500 for direct support of COVID-related needs in our communities. And I'm pleased to say in my ward we've been able to take advantage of it. I attended a regional or party councillor meeting where the value of these grants was lauded as a means of enabling smaller grassroots needs to be supported. However, I was disappointed to learn that the grant had been reduced initially to £500, probably because of a shortfall in uptake by some councillors. And I would look forward, hopefully, to the £1,000 grant being reinstated in the next budget to continue our localised support. And any shortfall in uptake in that year could possibly be available to wards with greater needs, should they then be required. That's all right. Just a statement on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Penny. Uh, Councillor Woods, I think you've indicated you'd like to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah th thank you, Councillor Cook. Uh, I'd just like to follow up on what Councillor Penny Milnes is saying and, and support what she said. Uh, I very much think the ward, uh, the ward uh, payment is, is a very good thing. Uh, and I'm pleased during these emergencies it was increased from £500,000. And I would also like to think that next time when we look at it in the budget, it could be maintained at, at £1,000. It's a very good initiative. It benefits a lot of community, local communities, and it's an excellent scheme. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor well, Wood. I know that a number of um, my own group members have also mentioned uh, similar to me, so obviously we'll have to incorporate that into our uh, budget thinking. Uh, Councillor Judy Stevens. 
Yes, thanks very much indeed. I just wanted to thank you as well and to reiterate um, what Councillor Milne has said. Um, it was good that you acted so quickly to reinstate the £1,000 because in fact in the deepings there are various charities that are very in need of um, help at this time and Councillor Jill Thomas and myself have both been able to help and um, the exotic pet refuge who are suffering because they can't have their open days at the moment because of for obvious reasons and also um, to help in the um, setting up of the Deeping Business Support Group, um, of which I'm part, um, and we've been able to put funds into that as well. So um, they're all being very well used, and thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Charmaine. Yes, uh, I'd actually like to also thank you for acting so promptly on that. I had actually discussed the um, issue with uh, Richard Wiles before um, when the funding was reduced and I do think there is a, a genuine issue that some wards may have more need than others simply because of the demographics of, of the ward. Um, I know that in particular the uh, Grantham Town Centre and I'm sure there are other hotspots throughout the district, um, we do have particular levels of poverty um, I have already had um, requests for my fund and in effect it's already allocated the South Links Blind Society being one of the groups because of the work that they've had to do taking t making telephone calls out and my, half of mine will be going to pay their £500 phone bill for that really important work so um, it just goes to demonstrate how important that fund is. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Ian Selby. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, Callum, I'd just like to say big well done and congratulations to, to yourself, your cabinet members and all our uh, council officers and, the, and staff for the brilliant work that they've been doing uh, under this, under these uh, uh, awful circumstances, it has to be said. So big well done to you for that. Um, with regards uh, the payments, Callum, I was absolutely delighted when, I, when the news came through that you'd raised this up to £1,000 as it originally was. In my view, it was a statement of intent from yourself that you was going to support the community, which gave a lot of confidence, I have to say, and I was absolutely thrilled to be So thank you very much indeed. No, thank you, Ian. I think it, it you know, it supports us all in our in our work as ward members. So I was, I was pleased to take that decision in consultation with others. Um, so that's it for appendix item number four. So we move on to appendix number five. Um, obviously, the temporary amendments to the Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing, that decision was taken on the 24th of March. Um, I think, you know, we need to be pragmatic about the, the policy amendments for existing taxi drivers to enable uh, those that were coming to an end of their term to receive a temporary six-month uh, uh, extension in response to uh, business closures and movement restrictions. Obviously, for existing taxi license holders to allow that self-certification of medical fitness and to allow on recent MOT certificates. Uh, instead of the required vehicle compliance checks and um, you know they were considered as managed risks um, obviously the suspension of new applicants whilst this enabled extensions to existing taxi license holders it did mean the suspension of the granting of licenses to new applicants because we weren't able to conduct the required safety checks um, and that's it on item number five uh, appendix number six uh, I want to speak on that one. Um, so effectively, the deferral of rental income for specific organisations occupying the, the council commercial premises. Um, so obviously, our art centres were closed on the 17th of March. Um, so obviously, we needed to take a decision to suspend the uh, payment of rent, and that was taken in consultation with uh, Councillor Adam Stokes. Uh, Charmaine Morgan, I think you've indicated on this item. Yes, thank you. I've got a couple of questions, if I may. Um, first of all, have we an idea up to date of how much it's costing us with regards to suspending the rents? Um, though I, I have to say I support that move. Um, the second question is, will SKDC be expecting payment later on? Are we just literally holding back asking for the money or are we saying you don't have to pay the money? I think because I think there's obviously a key difference to the businesses concerned. Thank you. Or all um, concerned. Well, obviously, in the in the report at 7.1, it, it clearly states that the financial cost will be 70,000 for, for one quarter. Um, the recommendation is suspension only, um, and then the rent will be payable at a later date once the current crisis has subsided. And obviously, we, we maintain regular contact with those businesses to ensure that we are supporting them. 
and uh, that we support them through this crisis. May I, may I come back on that? Um, yeah, have we had any feedback from um, those affected as to whether or not they think they'll actually be able to afford to? Are you expecting them to make claims against other grants, etc., that are now available so that they, they shouldn't be negatively impacted? Um, I haven't spoken specifically myself with those businesses affected. Um, obviously, I can invite Councillor Adam Stokes in on this as well. Um, but obviously, we will work with them as we would on, on any circumstance. Adam, did you have any comments to add? Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, yeah, I mean, they are positive conversations so far with all the tenants and the occupiers of the areas that we are suspending, and there's no issues at the moment. And once there are issues, that will be reported to Finance OSC as per the constitution and the reports that we take there. Thank you. Adam. Thank you. Um, so appendix number seven, so the remuneration of uh, street scene officers during COVID-19. So obviously the decision was taken on the 31st of March 2020 that we would provide additional payments. So this gave uh, £50 a week pro rata to the street scene key worker staff delivering those really essential and critical services, as well as increased the overtime rate to time and a half. And I think the importance of refuse collection and the appreciation of those crews has gained, you know, national and, and local attention as well. Um, why street scene? So other service areas are not receiving additional payments because their services have been able to adapt to the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID requirements. Um, Timescales, so these arrangements will be were backdated uh, to the 23rd of March until the end of June 2020, uh, when they will be reviewed by uh, the Chief Executive, myself and the Cabinet member. Um, the future with this, I suppose whilst it's too early to say anything, I think there will be a, a wider review of the street scene pay rates. Um, obviously, we're aware of, of where we sit within Lincolnshire, and I know we'll want to address that moving forwards. Um, and I'll invite Councillor Peter Mosley, if you just wanted to add anything, just to thank our, our street scene staff. Uh, yes, I mean, thank you, Callum. I mean, very succinctly put, um, I think this was absolutely the right thing to do at that time, and still is. Um, it does highlight the value that we should be placing on our uh, key essential workers, the ones that provide services which affect every single member of the district. Uh, and I'm delighted that we were able to do it quickly. I'm also delighted that we're going to have a closer look at that um, during the year, so that we can bring these, uh, you know, bring the pay rates of our staff in line with, uh, you know, with the job that they do. So um, very, very supportive of that decision. Thank you, Callum. Brilliant, uh, Councillor Baxter. Thank you, uh, through the chair. Thank you, uh, Callum. Uh, obviously, I agree with what has been said about our wonderful um, street scene officers and our men and women that are emptying our bins on a regular basis. And I understand this is exceptional for local authorities out throughout the country uh, to have kept the bins going the, the whole way through. It's brilliant. My question is about the impact on Environment SK. Environment SK is a company wholly owned by the council whose employees are obviously uh, employed by an independent company. What have the directors of Env Environment SK done, if anything, uh, to uh, recognise any extra work that may have been done uh, or any e exceptional circumstances that have affected the staff of Environment SK? Uh, I'll ask. Uh, Councillor Mosley, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your question, Councillor Baxter. Uh, uh, very much, um, uh, we were very proactive. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I speak as the chair of the directors of Environment SK. Um, the very first thing we did as soon as this uh, this crisis started was uh, make sure that the officers were very well aware uh, that our staff were there to allow flexibility within the entire council system. Uh, one of the main reasons that we brought Environment SK grants maintenance in-house uh, was to provide this council with exactly this type of flexibility. And whilst the circumstances are very regrettable, uh, it is very pleasing that we were able to act very quickly. Um, all of the Environment SK staff were offered an opportunity to volunteer to move into and be trained up to assist the waste uh, and street scene um, uh, workforce. Some did, and those that did uh, were remunerated uh, as the street scene staff would have been. 
Um, uh, the rest of the staff who chose not to did so for very different reasons. Some of our um, uh, Environment SK staff are, are elderly. Uh, um, they are, uh, you know, um, in vulnerable groups and may have had uh, underlying health conditions, and so they chose not to. Um, uh, so that is how we uh, we worked as Environment SK to support the council uh, during this crisis on street scene. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Right. Yeah. First of all, um, Peter, I would just like to to repeat really a huge, huge thank you to you and your team because you really have done a brilliant job um it's not only of the streets being kept clean but certainly from what i've witnessed and <laughs> unfortunately i'm out rather a lot when uh, following uh, dust cuts around etc um the nature the good naturedness in which the men have worked sometimes in quite difficult circumstances especially when they've got traffic queuing behind them and they're having to run up the road and do the bends um, I just think a massive thanks goes to them. Um, and picking up your point earlier about the pay, um, I would totally support any initiative that would see our staff, and not just our, our um, wonderful waste collection team, but also across the board. I think all our staff have proven they're waiting gold, and I would like us to certainly be bringing their wages up so that they're at least in line, for example, with neighbouring authorities. Thank you. Uh, Peter, did you want to respond to any of that? Um, uh, just very quickly, Colin, to, to thank Councillor Morgan for her comments. Um, obviously, I'm sure the officers will pass those on to the team. The team are a credit to us, uh, and uh, uh, you can be assured that uh, uh, both the leader and myself uh, are very well aware of the challenges ahead in terms of looking at uh, how our street scene are properly remunerated. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. Um, so moving on to Appendix 8, obviously the refuse and recycling collection operational policies. So obviously a key decision was taken on the 31st of uh, March, and these changes are intended to increase the flexibility to be able to respond to periods of emergency and to do everything possible to maintain uh, the refuse collection as an essential and critical service. Um, that waste could happen, uh, waste collection could happen at times outside of normal hours. Um, and I think it's important to stress that at the moment we've managed to maintain the service completely as normal with no service disruption and uh, none of the policy changes so far being being needed on those. That's item eight. Uh, so moving on to agenda uh, appendix nine. Uh, so the coronavirus job retention scheme, obviously we took the decision on the 22nd of April. Um, so this report confirms that SKDC uh, did not consider the government's furlough scheme generally appropriate for, for most of our staff. However, there might be some exceptions. Um, and obviously delegated authority to the chief executive. And I think just important to note that the council would top up the government scheme uh, so that staff would not experience a reduction in salary, income or pension contributions. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Thank you. Forgive me for using this slot, really. Um, and I appreciate it's really short notice because really the news is only just broken. But have we had an opportunity to examine how the government's announcements earlier this week may have an impact on any of our staff at all. Thank you. Uh, is there any, any specific government announcement you were thinking of in particular? Yeah, in particular, the, the back to work. Um, does that directly affect any of our staff? Are we bringing anybody back from um, into the office or are we largely still working from home? Um, how, how is that impacting on our staff? So at the moment, um, and in my speech earlier uh, earlier on this afternoon, I, I made a comment that for the time being, we will continue working as we are in a remote way. Um, obviously, with our staff, we are um, doing a, an online survey with them every week to ensure that we're supporting them, whether that be the equipment, whether that be their mental health, or just checking in on them to make sure that they're working OK. Um, but for the foreseeable future, um, we will continue working in our, in our remote way. Uh, and obviously, that will be reviewed um, as and when with the Chief Executive. In console, in with information to opposition group leaders. Uh, so that's agenda item number nine. So Thank agenda, you. Uh, appendix 10, so the suspension of collection enforcement of our pay and display car parks. Um, so obviously most of you will know we took that decision on the 27th of March 2020, um, and that was just simply a suspension, I think, in recognition that the remaining car park users were largely key workers and other essential personnel. Um, they came into force on the 27th of March, and that uh, will take place until the end of June when it will be reviewed again. Um, season ticket holders were written to in order to confirm that their permits would be extended by the same period following this. 
um, as a financial impact. Obviously, you know there is a, a we have received a 95% drop um, in in our income for that. Um, and at the moment, I'm working with other leaders across the county in relation to the reintroduction of car parking charges. However, that won't be for the foreseeable future. I think it's, it's predicted that we will do that at the same time when it is appropriate uh, to do so. Uh, and I have uh, Councillor Lee Steptoe. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Cook. I think you've just answered my question, actually. But uh, obviously, uh, car park um, charges are suspended until the 30th of June, which is fantastic. You've just said that that's going to be reviewed, which is the answer I was looking for. Uh, so if we look, just be a little bit more precise, when do you think that decision will be reviewed? Will it literally be at the end of, of June? Thank you. Yeah, so at the end of June, um, I think what I'll do is I'll have a conversation with the other Lincolnshire leaders to see where they're doing and also a conversation with uh, the other group leaders on our own council. Um, but obviously it all depends on where we are on the uh, recovery stage, particularly around lockdown and uh, car parking charges. So we will review it at the end of June and then it's either a decision to extend that following that. Thank you for that. Thank you. That's agenda item number 10. So obviously appendix number 11, um, so the coronavirus job retention scheme. Uh, so uh, as some of you will see, uh, this decision gave the authority to furlough 13 of the East Midlands building control staff because of a drop off in the external fee earning income uh, with funded posts. Obviously they are, you know, we work across uh, Rushcliffe Borough Council, Newark and Sherwood District Council as well. Um, so the partnership is topping up the government scheme so that the staff will not experience a reduction in salary, income or pension contributions. Um, and as soon as the economy starts moving again, we're expecting uh, that work to pick back up and obviously get them back to work as soon as possible. But for the foreseeable future, we'll continue on that furlough scheme. Uh, moving on to item number 12. I don't think I've missed anybody. Um, temporary amendment to the uh, South SK uh, Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing. Obviously, recognising the closure of car showrooms, uh, the report temporarily increased the age limit for a vehicle to continue to be licensed as a taxi um, from 10 years to 11 years for licence renewals due up to and including up to the 31st of December 2020 or until restrictions relating to car sales are lifted, whichever is sooner. Uh, Councillor Jane Kingman. Are you there, Jane? Hello. Hello, Jane. We can hear you. Hello. Hello there. Um, I would just like to say how proud I am of the sterling work that our leader and cabinet have done. Um, the staff at SKDC have handled all the issues in a prompt and efficient way. Also, the councillors are out there helping residents in our community. I mean, it's so lovely to see what a marvellous team of people have at the SKDC. And I just wanted to put that point over because everybody's worked so well together and I feel so proud and I just wanted to say thank you. That's, that's very kind. Thank you, Jane. And um, that's duly noted. Uh, Councillor Bisnell Singh. Harish, are you there? I, I'm here. Uh, thank you, Callum. Um, and thank you very much for the stalwart uh, work that has been done, especially with all the thing on the appendix. I have been uh, re really pleased to see uh, that uh, the work has been, the tremendous amount of work that has been going on. I would like to, with regard to our item uh, appendix uh, 12, I would take it because I don't have anything against extensions of the for a, uh, for a year uh, from ten, year, uh, ten years old to eleven years away, but that will still be subject to the car being fully fit, that is MOT'd and roadworthy. Uh, so I'll ask, uh, I think Councillor Mosley on this one. Obviously, I think it relates to yeah. an earlier decision that was taken, but Peter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, we do have to bear in mind that um, because uh, garages and the like are closed, there is an uh, there is an earlier decision which uh, uh, which allows for um, rather than the taxi inspections that we would normally have for a standard MOT to be su sufficient for uh, vehicle worthiness. Uh, but this is purely because there were a couple, and I think it was only one or two. Uh, licensed taxi drivers whose vehicles were approaching the maximum age uh, and of course as Callum has said uh, the there is no facility at the moment for people to go out and buy a new vehicle um, and so it was the right thing to do to extend this uh, we fully expect that obviously we're, we're hoping that things are going to be very much back to normal next year uh, and that those uh, taxi drivers will be able to re um, renew their vehicles 
Can I ask a second to replace, uh, Peter? Yeah. Uh, uh, with regards to also with these uh, taxi drivers, especially in Stanford, we've got a problem, especially where the uh, Red Lion Square is. We've got a large area of pedestrian crossing marks studded with brass studs, and the taxis park on that. And which is really is inconvenience people to really uh, to to go around. They have to go on, on on top of the road. Quite a lot of us tend to line up there. I wonder if we have got a policy to uh, inform them to say why well, they should not be parking where there is sensory pedestrian crossing. Um, th thank you for that input, Councillor Business Thing. Um, there are already uh, uh, provisions in place uh, for the Code of Conduct for our, S our licensed taxi drivers and hackney carriage license holders. Uh, and the, the information that you've provided, I'm sure the Chief Executive will pass these on to uh, the licensing team so that they can follow them up. Brilliant. Thank, thank you very much, much. Peter. Um, so moving on to Appendix 13, so meeting procedures uh, during the COVID-19 restriction period. Um, so obviously we've been able to hold this uh, virtual meeting and, you know, I think it's important to know that, you know, a lot of the councils across the country still haven't yet held a, a virtual meeting. So we've done really well on that. Um, so obviously the government's introduced regulations to allow us to make certain changes to our uh, rules of procedure. Um, the regulations uh, require us all to be heard and where possible seen. Um, so I'm really pleased that we've been able to hold this council meeting with all 56 members uh, able to join. Um, some other councils have done their virtual meetings with uh, reduced members, so just a core it. Um, I think for me and, and other members, it was really important that all members have the opportunity to take part in this meeting. And uh, for this first virtual meeting, um, obviously we haven't had uh, public or members questions or motions. Um, I know this has disappointed uh, some people, but I think we just needed to strike the balance to ensure we had a well-run, efficient, uh, lawful virtual meeting for our first one. Uh, and obviously at our next meeting, we will be reintroducing uh, open questions and uh, motions. Uh, so Councillor Baxter, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Callum, through the chair. Um, I've, this is one of the things that has frustrated me most uh, about the crisis. I, I applaud everything that you and your team and our team at SKDC and the subsidiary companies have been doing during the crisis. That goes without saying, and it's been exceptionally busy, I'm sure. However, I think that um, we're over six weeks now uh, has been too long to get this kind of thing together. Um, as you will remember, at the cabinet meeting and even prior to that I suggested that we prioritise um, training members on the use of remote conferencing and I didn't feel I was taken seriously at the time um, but I'm happy that most members, uh, nearly all the members are now able to use this facility and at long last we're having a meeting. Um, I, I don't know how many councils have already had meetings, I don't know how many have yet to have meetings. Uh, for me we could have been, we could have got our act together sooner. Finally, I'm also pleased to say that finally we had a draft schedule of meetings published yesterday. Um, I think the, the, the council website still has a blank page for June and July and August, but at least we members now have got a draft schedule. And I understand that there is a, a normal, or what you might call normal, virtual council meeting planned for mid-July, if you could confirm the date. But what what I would like to say is that at the cabinet meeting, um, the last cabinet meeting before we shut down, or the cabinet meeting where we were shut down, um, one of our concerns has been about being consulted or notified or informed, whichever word you choose to use. Um, at that cabinet meeting, there was no mention that there would be an emergency meeting of an emergency team later that afternoon. It would have been easy to invite those members, including myself and I think Councillor Dilks, that had driven up from the Deepings to just sit in at that meeting as observers. But instead, uh, we weren't even told that it was taking place. And I think that reflects badly uh, on the theme that we've gone through this afternoon about collaboration and cooperation with opposition parties. Um, finally, the voting procedures at this meeting, uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's been a little bit uh, strained with them. Um, if there is a way to work out a a robust way to take a, a poll for the less controversial uh, votes, I wouldn't be against that. Um, so, for example, approving the minutes of the last meeting, 
unlikely to be contentious, and so I would be happy to, to do that via a poll if it's possible, but that's something to look into for next time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, obviously, I'll task the Chief Executive to look into the, uh, the voting mechanisms. I know we, well, we all want a smooth meeting. Obviously, uh, our Head of Governance, uh, Joe Toomey, circulated the draft council dates and committee dates, uh, and obviously members have been asked for their comments on those before they are published formally and then uh, published onto the council website. Obviously, the next council meeting is planned for the 16th of July, dependent on no other clashes. Um, obviously, I can remember when you mentioned about training members at the Cabinet meeting, and that was taken seriously because I did task the Chief Executive to uh, look into that. And obviously, well, we are we are where we are now. Um, and I think it's important to note that whilst uh, some members might feel we've been slow off the mark with virtual meetings, I think ultimately it comes to this for me. You know, we have critical services, and do I want our staff to support vulnerable residents or those that are in need, or do I want them to be drafting agenda dates for us? Now, of course, you know, democracy is vitally important, and absolutely we need it, but, you know, at, at some point we've got to deal with those critical services, and our staff have done an amazing job. Uh, we have over 90 staff working across the council in different roles to what they are, um, and obviously we're now in a position where we can restart those committees, restart those council meetings, and I think it's a really positive move. Uh, so, if I can invite uh, Councillor Charmaine Morgan, please. Yes. Yeah, so, first of all, just to um, to support what Ashley said regarding the voting, and I'm sure everyone's going to say the same thing. Um, I don't know how we're going to do it, but that that is it. Just took so much longer um, having to ask every single person every single time, and then revisiting uh, as we did two thirds of the votes earlier was, wasn't terribly helpful. But one slight concern I've got, um, I don't know about anybody else, but I have had some technical issues with Skype dropping in and out. And I'm just slightly concerned at um, the comments um, that have been made that basically if you're not there when your name is called out, then you're not present, for example, being one of them. Given that we are totally dependent on technology, uh, and I know I had some major issues the previous meeting, which, which it turns out to have uh, my network, um, uh, the, it seems that perhaps just a bit of latitude there, uh, and, and maybe we would do it anyway, but that's not how it's come across. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Charmaine. Uh, Paul, Paul Wood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Yeah, I just wanted to congratulate you, really, uh, Councillor Cook and Karen, for the way you have handled things, really, during this crisis. I think you've done exceptionally well. I think you're absolutely right to keep this meeting fairly short and not let, let questions and things like that and motions go forward. Otherwise, I think it would have dragged it out too long. Uh, I, do, I must actually, actually agree with Councillor Baxter about the voting, though. Maybe maybe we ought to look look at better ways of actually doing that, because it just seems to take quite a long while. But generally, I think things have been handled very well. Uh, as leader of, uh, of the independence, I think it's it's our job to hold you to account, but also not just to hold you to account and scrutinise or criticise you, but actually say well done when you have done well. Uh, and I think in these cases so far, you've done well, Callum. Very good. Thank you. No, thank you, Paul, and thank you for your uh, support. I think what we'll do with the voting is um, we'll come up with some proposals, and then I'll uh, I'll uh, discuss it at the next group leaders meeting with uh, with you and Charmaine, so we can all agree on a way forwards. Uh, Councillor Jan Hansen. Thank you, Callum. Um, just, just a quickie. Um, yeah, I'd like to congratulate you on how these meetings uh, I viewed the planning meeting a couple of days ago. This meeting's gone so far, considering it's the first time for most of us. Um, one thing that I noticed, more or less the first meeting I ever went to at the council uh, sort of 12 months ago, was how few members of the public show an interest. Well, I see at the moment we've got 78 participants. I don't know how many of those are officers and whatever, how many members of the public. But I think it would be nice to try and encourage more of the public to participate in meetings, if, even if it was through a video link, um, perhaps at a later date when things calm down a bit, we could consider um, showing our meetings taking place via video, just, just to get more people. There'd be a lot of people that are retired, can't get to these meetings but probably would be interested in how democracy operates locally. So um, perhaps that's something we could have a chat about later on when things calm down a bit with this coronavirus. But thank you very much again, Kevin, for the way things have gone up to now.
No, thank you. Thank you, Jan. And I think it's it's very true, and I think I'll certainly be lobbying that. I think in the future we need to have a mixture of both that virtual meeting and also, you know, people here in the chamber because, you know, we've come so far in such a short period and the transformation, I think it'd be such a shame to go backwards, and I'll certainly be, be lobbying for that. Uh, Councillor Helen Crawford. Hello there, Councillor. I would just like to say a big thank you to the IT department. They've worked fantastically hard to get you 400 staff working from home is amazing. For those of us who are in the dark ages and don't like modern technology, it's all working perfectly well. And, you know, if you know somebody on the council who isn't au fait with it, then, you know, you can phone up and help train them yourselves. But it is more important to get staff working than us to have meetings. And I'd just like to thank all the IT staff and yourself for all your hard work. Thank you. No, thank you, Helen. I also echo your comments for our IT staff as well. Uh, Councillor Harris is now the same. Uh, th thank you, Callum. Congratulations for a meeting well run. I, I support everything that Councillor Paul Wood and others have said for today. It was really excellent. One thing I would like to add, those members that are suffering from their connections with the Wi-Fi connections, I wonder if they are too far away in a different, totally different room from where their Wi-Fi box is. If they can't be on the same room where the Wi-Fi box is, I think you could uh, the, the links is, con is continuously maintained. I had the same problem initially when we were doing the, uh, the planning uh, training or, uh, uh, with the Wi-Fi. When I was in a totally different room far away, mine keep dropping out. But seeing being in the same place, same room, is absolutely perfect. I wonder if you could try that. No, brilliant, Harish. And if any members are having any difficulty, then please either email myself or IT and we can um, try and get some help out to you. Uh, and finally, I've got Councillor Ian Selby. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Callum. Um, first of all, as I say, I think the IT department have been absolutely exceptional. They've done a brilliant job. Um, I mean, to, to have got, got us all up to doing a full council in such a short period, and I say all the other work that they've had to do as well, is marvellous. This technology um, that we've got today, um, incredible. And it just makes me think, I mean, I have to say, I mean, as, as a as a Grantham district councillor, we, we have a dual role, Callum. We we we're charter trustees as well. Um, I've actually been in touch with the um, the, the the office at, at Hena, the, the mayoral office there. Um, that uh, the mayor there, as you'll recall, um, she gave some diabolical comments about Boris Johnson when he was in hospital. Um, they've actually had a, their, their uh, meeting last. Thursday, and they I believe they now have a new mayor. We have a new mayor of Stamford as well, using this sort of technology, you know. And I'm just asking the one of the question. Obviously, it's not really directly at yourself, but you know, why is the uh, the mayor of Grantham uh, making the decision to uh, to have their, the mayor the mayor's office changing over in September? Whereas, you know, I think it should be done later this month. But that's just my view. But that's uh, that's I'm speaking there as my, in my dual role as a Charter of Trustees, Callum, and I. I just think that the Mayor of Gantham should look into that and maybe reconsider a decision that was we was informed uh, about this and we weren't consulted. I wasn't even consulted prior to the decision being made. So I was a little disappointed with that, to say the least. So I hope the Mayor will, of Grantham will, will reconsider that decision. Um, as I want to say once again, Cal, thank you very much indeed for all the brilliant work that you and all your cabinet have been doing, all our officers. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. It really is. It's an unprecedented times, Callum. Absolutely. You know, so let's, let's not underestimate what's been achieved by our council for our community. Um, and so I'm, I'm personally, I'm, I'm very proud of you guys. I really am. And all our staff, and I was going to say our IT staff as well. So thank you very much indeed. No, thank you, Ian, for that. Um, so I know obviously we had a bit of a uh, off tangent, uh, but moving on to Appendix 14, so the final uh, appendix. Um, so the officer delegated decision made on the 1st of April. Um, so the employee assistance programme was extended to include uh, elected members and their close families from the 1st of April um, until the end of March next year. So this saw an additional cost of £420 funded from our wellbeing budget. Um, and this scheme now enables us as elected members to also act to assess, you know, mental health support and advice, support around managing stress and anxiety and access to qualified uh, counsellors uh, should professional support be uh, required. So I think that was really important for me just to give that to members as well as our staff. Um, 
No more on item 14. So, Councillor Dilks, I think you wanted to come in at the end. Are you there, Phil? Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you very much, Callum. Um, I, I did indicate about 20 minutes ago um, that I wanted to come in at the end because I wanted to give you the courtesy of, of actually getting through your lengthy report. Um, but I do want to say, um, speaking as an independent councillor, some would say opposition, um, I support all the uh, uh, comments um, that have been made by um, uh, members of all parties and none. Um, and, and I would want to, as I'm sure others will, endorse all the decisions um, that you and the team um, have made uh, during the emergency um, up to now, uh, in particular support for businesses and, of course, local residents. Uh, two things it's been said, but I, I hope you don't mind me just um, um, repeating. I, I particularly echo the uh, congratulations to all our staff in keeping our vital services running. Um, yes, IT, um, and, and we could go through a list, but um, particularly um, keeping our refuse collection going. I know some councils haven't managed that, so I congratulate you on uh, doing that, and uh, Dr. Peter Mosley, thank you, um, and all the team there. Um, and also, of course, colleagues have already said, but I think it is important to say, the importance of the um, grant, uh, ward members grant, um, that you did um, double uh, back to its original £1,000. Um, um, I've certainly been able to uh, use that to help deliver um, to ha help deliver um, food parcels for um, vulnerable people in my ward. I know lots of other people have done uh, very similar things. Ward members know what's needed in their own locality, and so I do hope when we get back to whatever normal will be that we can um, maintain it at least at the thousand pounds. Um, but uh, I think it's money really well spent. Um, as I say, I, I just want to say thank you uh, to you and all the team. I think you have done a good job. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dilks. Uh, Councillor Morgan, final speaker for this one before I sum up. Yeah, thank you. I, I think actually it's really appropriate that we're ending on well-being. Um, and I'd like you to thank you for um, putting this on the agenda and for the work that's happened with the assistance programme. Um, if there's anything that struck me, um, it's, it's that obviously all, our, all of us have gone through some varying degree of concern, in some cases potential personal risk um, with the situation at the moment. Um, our frontline staff, of course, are having to deal with some very harrowing stories and juggle a number of different things. I, as an opposition uh, group leader, would like to just ask you if you could pass this message on, because I don't think, I have to say, I think you have done a better job of running this council than the government is currently doing. You've given clear direction, and we're following plans through, and you're delivering what, what you said that you would. So I'd like to congratulate you on that. But I think if there's a message we need to get back to the government, it needs to start doing the same thing because there's an awful lot of very concerned people out there. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Charlene, for those very, very kind comments. Um, if I can just uh, just finish just by thanking, um, firstly, uh, so Karen Bradford, our, our chief executive, who I'm in constant contact with on a daily basis um, for, <laughs> for numerous hours. Um, you know, she is certainly leading the council and, uh, you know, on the professional side with all of her staff and officers, uh, all the 400 people working from home. Um, particularly, I'd like to pay tribute to, um, obviously, my deputy leader, Barry Dobson, um, for the, the personal support he gives me and professional, as well as all of the cabinet um, for leading their portfolios. You know, we really are working as a team and all members of the council. It has really enthused me to see how, you know, this crisis has brought us all together, working for the, the common purpose to improve the district and supporting businesses and residents and those in need. Um, so I'm going to hand back to the chairman, but, you know, thank you for your support, for all of your kind messages, whether that be today or via email and text and everything else. You know, it really does mean a lot to me and I know other members that get them. Um, so please stay safe and I will um, I'll hand back to our, our council chairman. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you very much indeed for uh, everything that's uh, gone on today. Um, it is the first of uh, a full council. Um, 
as a virtual me uh, meeting. Uh, there have been some uh, hiccups, um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that within uh, a very short period we will be quite used to it. Um, I believe there were some members of the public that joined us today, and I, I hope we can get that to grow. Um, and uh, again, just thanks to everybody for the help and support that they've given. And I think the the um, the help and support that we're also getting from members of the general public, uh, it's quite amazing to me just how many people are involved in, in helping out. Um, and uh, uh, let's hope that uh, that can continue, but uh, that uh, eventually we won't need that much help but I think uh, things are will go on for a, a lot longer yet um, and uh, uh, we will see things um, but hopefully we can uh, all play our part uh, in that so thank you very much it's been a longer session I think than we anticipated but uh, a very useful one and a very good one so I'll now declare the meeting closed and once the recording has been stopped, the session will be ended, uh, which will remove everybody from the meeting. So thank you very much. And thank you for all of the officers that have helped as well today. Thank you.